Oh, hey, what's up, Fun Ahead fans? I hope you are having a fantastic day so far, whatever day it is for you, or whatever time of day it is for you. Today, we're going to be talking about how to prolong the life of the engine in your Porsche. Stay tuned. All right, so I've been doing a series of videos lately on that car right there, which is a 2005 Porsche Boxster S. Unfortunately, the engine in this car has kind of met somewhat of an early demise. And by that, I mean, it, it, it was running and it was, in fact, it was running quite great. Uh, but the problem was it was starting to see some premature uh, con connecting rod bearing wear. At this point, we have the engine completely torn down. This is actually uh, all of everything sitting here ready to go to the machine shop. This thing did experience some fairly severe connecting rod bearing wear for only having 97,000 miles on the clock. And today, just to kind of coattail on everything we've been doing with this car and with this engine, this video is all about how to prevent this from happening to your car. So it's no secret that Porsches are expensive. They're expensive cars if you just go to the dealership and buy them. And they're also expensive to maintain, or they can be. I would say overall, as far as sports cars go, they're not the worst in the world, but you know, still. Parts are expensive, labor's expensive, and you know, if you end up having to do something like we're doing over here, it gets very expensive. So, how can we avoid having to do a serious teardown such as this? And unfortunately, in this case, if you need to do your connecting rod bearings, you literally have to tear it down to that level. So this video is just gonna be a compilation of just several things that you can do, whether it's driving behaviors with your car or things that you can do maintenance-wise so that you can avoid your engine meeting a similar fate. Hola. Step one would be oil change interval. The 987 generation had a 20,000 mile oil change interval from the factory. Now, of course, that car right over there from the factory had a 15,000 mile oil change interval. So not much better than 20,000, but still pretty severe. The, the 2005 Boxsters still had an M96 generation engine in them, which was the same generation as what was seen in the 996 and 986s. So this is an M96 and miraculously somehow they can add 5,000 miles to the oil change interval and have it still be okay. That makes no sense at all. Anyway, point being the oil change interval from the factory, the recommended oil change interval is insane and they have since actually backed it back down to 10,000 miles recommended on these cars, which is still, in my opinion, a little bit long. I'm a 5,000 mile guy. I keep everything to 5,000 miles and even below that. Sometimes I'll even do 3,000 miles. If I've been driving hard recently and doing a few trips down into some mountain roads, yeah, no, we're gonna go ahead and do the oil at 3,000 miles. Point being, first item, oil change interval, 20,000 miles is ridiculous. Stick between three and 5,000 and you should be good. The next item is oil type. So when you start scouring forums, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, you gotta do the factory recommended Mobile One Zero W40. And this is a great oil. I'm not dissing it at all. However, I have two kind of counter recommendations for this. First, instead of running Zero W40, run 5W50. Mobile One makes a 5W50 Euro spec oil that actually meets the same qualifications as what the Zero W40 does. And that kind of heavier, thicker oil will help to provide a little bit better protection, especially in higher heat situations. Now, there is an asterisk that goes along with this, and that is only run it if you run this car uh, in spring, summer, and fall. Don't run a heavier oil in the winter. And I know what you're thinking, wait, what makes you think you can just go ahead and run a heavier oil? Well, look in your owner's manual. Even though everyone only talks about the 0W40, your owner's manual literally says you can run up to a 5W50 weight for summer months. So why not do it? It's more protection. Now the other thing that I have actually been doing for years with my cars is actually not running the mobile one. I actually run Redline oil. That is actually this oil right here. I'm not sponsored whatsoever. I just, I like the stuff and I just, you know, figured I'd let you know. That's what I do. So what's special about this oil is it's more of like a racing derived oil. So it has pretty high ZDDP, which is like zinc, digga, 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 some really huge long word. And basically it's an oil additive that helps, you know, reduce friction within your motor. However, it is not a high zinc motor oil. So a lot of people will immediately be like, wait, you can't run zinc with cars that have catalytic converters because it'll mess up your cats. In this case, it's a low enough ZDDP number that it improves friction and wear inside your motor, but also doesn't hurt your cats if your engine is burning some level of oil. It also has like a ton of other additives, a lot of chemical words that I just don't know. But the point is, Mobile One is good, but this oil is like insanely good. Downside is it's quite expensive, but hey, it's worth it. You know, it's your Porsche and if you love it, 
put the right stuff in it. The next thing that you can do to help prolong the life of your M96 or M97 engine is to run a low temperature thermostat. Now this is actually not a low temp thermostat, this is the stock thermostat, and this one opens at 83 degrees. The low temperature thermostat opens at 71 degrees. So that's what, a 12 degree difference in Celsius, which comes out to being about a 22 degree difference for us Fahrenheit types. Now, some of you might be wondering, what does a thermostat do, David? And how exactly does a low temperature thermostat benefit the entire situation? Well, I've got some paper here, and we're gonna talk about that. All right, now, time for me to draw the world's worst 911. Oh yeah. Here's your engine. You have a water pump right here, and you have coolant pipes running up to your radiators. And then you have a thermostat, which for illustration purposes, we'll say is right here. So you start your car, and then this, the coolant within your engine block just circulates until it gets up to a certain temperature, that is the thermostat opening temperature, at which point it will then begin sending coolant up towards the radiators to have it cooled off, and then the radiators send back cooled off coolant back to the engine. Then once the coolant temperature within the engine gets down to a certain level, the thermostat will begin to close off, and then it will circulate that same coolant until it gets too hot again to then begin sending it back up to the radiators to have it cooled off, and it's just one big cycle. So then as the name thermostat suggests, it's similar, I guess, to the thermostat inside your house in that it regulates temperature of the thing that it's regulating. So you might be wondering too, what's the purpose of regulating a certain temperature? Well, uh, essentially it's an emissions device. The whole purpose of it is to keep the engine at the most ideal temperature during normal operation for combustion. To contrast this, when you first start your car, a cold start, your engine is running terribly and making terrible emissions. Now, of course, your catalytic converters have not yet fired off, but also combustion is very difficult when the engine is cold. It has to run the engine very rich uh, basically adding excess fuel to ensure that combustion happens because the normal leaner mixtures are not possible when your engine is cold. So anyway, the whole point being it helps to ensure that your engine stays up to temperature at all times during engine operation. Anyway, all of that to be said, if you run a slightly cooler temperature by dropping it 12 degrees Celsius, you're not hurting tailpipe emissions. But what you are doing is you are helping your oil stay that much cooler during engine operation, which just helps the overall lubrication properties of the oil and keeps everything running that much more smoothly. The other thing too that they say happens is that when your thermostat is closed for longer, these engines can potentially get hot spots around some of the cylinders, which means that they become more prone to cylinder wall damage if you have hot spots in certain areas and cold spots in others. So running a low temperature thermostat does help the longevity of your motor. Now, the next item, and it kind of piggybacks on the low temperature thermostat thing, is clean your radiators regularly. That is a major thing with these cars because the way that the front bumper is designed, it basically is like a channel for dirt straight into the radiators. And over a not very long time, you can accumulate a lot of just dirt and dust and debris, and, and that starts to pack in between the fins of your radiator, therefore decreasing the efficiency of your radiator and causing your coolant temps to be that much higher. The next thing has to do with driving style. And actually the rest of these all have to do with driving style. Don't do short drives with it. Now the purpose of this is so that your oil can get up to operating temperature and be up there for a while. Now you might be wondering, okay, dude, that sounds pretty like contradictory to what you just said. Don't you wanna keep your oil cooler? Yes, you do, but to an extent. You don't want it to be boiling lava hot, but you also don't want it to be just be at room temperature. The reason being, when you do a cold start on any car, any internal combustion engine ever, you introduce a lot of fuel into the oil. And the reason is, when you first start the car, the cylinder walls are cold, you have less efficient combustion, so therefore the ECU forces the engine to run rich, so you just have more fuel going into the cylinders, and you have some cylinder wash down, which means that you literally have fuel washing down the cylinder walls getting past the piston rings. Now, of course, that introduces fuel into your oil. That negatively affects the the lubrication properties of your oil, and if you have enough fuel in your oil, you can really start to do some damage. So the whole purpose of running your car long enough to get your oil up to, up to temperature is so that you can burn out that extra fuel in the oil. Actually, to kind of just w add one more point onto that, I won't. I will go as far as not even starting that car to like just move it around the garage really quick. If I start that car. I am going to take it for at least a 25 or 30 minute drive every single time. So if I ever have to just move it throughout the garage really quick, I'll just push it. All right, now the next thing also has to do with driving habits and that is while your engine is warming up, keep the engine below 3000 RPMs. 
Now, the reason for this is you don't wanna be putting too much stress and strain on all of the mechanical components in your engine when your oil is cold. So just don't put it under a heavy load for one and also just keep it like, just shift right at 3000 RPMs up until the time that the engine is fully up to operating temperature. But also on that note, don't ever, ever let your engine warm up by just idling because of the fuel dilution thing. Now I know this sounds like a lot. I'm saying like, okay, there's all sorts of things that you can and can't do as far as this. You don't want to run the engine too hot. You don't want to run it too cold. And all of the hardware stuff that I mentioned has to do with keeping the engine cooler. All of the driving habit stuff has to do with getting the engine hot. When I start the car, I let it idle for maybe two minutes or so to get the oil nice and circulated. And then I let the, the revs kind of come down. Once they come down, I start driving right away. That way, then I can start introducing plenty of heat into the oil to get it warmed up as fast as possible. And then I do at least that 20 to 25 minute drive every time before parking it. Whenever you are cruising down a road or down the highway or whatever, select the gear that allows the engine to be at least at 3000 RPMs. Now the reason for this is these engines don't like to lug. Now lugging means when you are at too low of an RPM and you're asking for too much torque. The, the slow frequency, hard impact combustions into the crank do damage to it. And so that could potentially contribute to having connecting rod bearing wear, which is obviously not good. So if you keep the engine above 3000 RPMs after it's warmed up, then you have a really nice, you know, frequency of pulses going into that crankshaft and you just you don't do damage to it as a result these are porsches after all and they like to be run hard and they like to be revved up so therefore just keep it above 3000 rpm so if you're just driving along which brings me to my last point You've probably heard people say this before these engines run better and run longer when you drive the piss out of them that's exactly what i'm going to say drive the piss out of your car these things love to be driven hard these engines love to run. They don't want to just kind of be like, oh, laboring along, get, keeping your car up at 45, 50, 60 miles an hour. No, they want to be running hard and doing the freaking thing. So let them run and let them run hard. And the last, the truly last thing that you need to do to keep these cars on the road for as long as freaking possible is to like this video. Please do me a huge favor and like this video if you enjoyed this content. Also, comment down below. Let me know what kind of Porsche you have. And if you don't have a Porsche, let me know what kind of car you'd like to buy. Even if, even if it's not a Porsche, let me know what kind of cars you're into. I'm a car guy. I love talking shop. Let me know what you're into. Let me know what you own. I'm all about it. Let's chat. With that, I hope you guys found this video somewhat helpful. I know it was kind of a talking heavy video, but inherently it's just kind of the nature of the beast when we're just talking about things that you have to do to help prevent premature failure of your car's engine. Thank you guys so much for tuning into Fun Ahead TV. I really appreciate you guys watching. You guys are the absolute best, and I will see you guys in the next episode.